This is lesson 32 of our Calculus 3 series, Power Series. A power series is a series of the form summation n goes from 0 to infinity a sub n x to the n. So that looks like a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x to the third. And notice we have the dot 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 here indicating that it goes on indefinitely. So this is just like a polynomial but it has infinitely many terms. Now we've been talking about the convergence or divergence of our series. So what does that mean now that we have power series? Well, for each fixed value of x, this is going to be a series of numbers, and we can talk about if that series converges or not. So if we consider this power series as a function of x, it's a function whose domain is the set of x values for which the series converges. Now one of the simplest examples of a power series would be one where all of the coefficients are the same. So instead of having different a sub n, we have all the ai are the same, they're all equal to the constant a. And so what we really have is a geometric series where r is equal to x. And we know for a geometric series that it'll converge to a over 1 minus r, or in this case a over 1 minus x, for absolute x less than 1, and it'll diverge for absolute x greater than or equal to 1. Now because the constants are all the same here, we were able to recognize it as a geometric series, and it was rather simple to find out for which x values it would converge or diverge. But in general, it takes a little bit more work for a general power series. So usually we'll be using the ratio test. And remember that with the ratio test, when that limit is equal to one, the test is inconclusive. So usually we'll use the ratio test and then we'll have to check the x values for which the limit is equal to one for each of our power series. So let's take a look at that work for the same series we just saw. This is the same series that has constant a here for the coefficients. And so the ratio test says to look at limit as n goes to infinity, the n plus first term over the nth term. So here we have a x to the n plus 1 over a x to the n in absolute value. Now notice that because we're dividing by x here, x cannot be 0 for this work. But for x equals 0, this series converges to a. But let's simplify here. Our a's cancel and then n copies of x cancel, and we're left with just limit as n goes to infinity, absolute value of x. Now notice n is going to infinity here, and there are no n's left here, so this is just absolute value of x. And this is our L from the ratio test. Remember that if L is less than 1, we know that our series converges absolutely. If L is greater than 1, our series diverges, and if L is equal to 1, we have no conclusion. So our limit L is absolute value of x, so for absolute value of x less than 1, the series converges absolutely. For absolute value of x greater than 1, the series diverges. And now what's happening when absolute value of x is equal to 1. When L is equal to 1, well, we have two cases. We either have x is equal to 1 or x is equal to negative 1. When x is equal to 1, we have a times 1 to the n, so that's the series of a, and that certainly diverges because that's a plus a plus a plus a plus a infinitely many times. And then when x is equal to negative 1, we have a times negative 1 to the n, so that's going to give us a minus a plus a minus a, and that also diverges, because our partial sums are either going to be a or 0, and it's going to keep alternating between those two. The limit of those partial sums doesn't exist, and so this series diverges. And so for x equal 1 and for x equal negative 1, this series diverges. So we can say that for absolute value of x greater than or equal to 1, the series diverges. And we still have our result from up here, absolute value of x less than 1, the series converges. And this is the same result we got by recognizing the series as a geometric series. But in general, remember that our coefficients are going to be different and depend on n. 
So most of our power series are not going to be geometric. And so we will have to use the ratio test to deal with most of them. Now here's an even more general version of a power series. We have a sub n x minus c to the nth power. Here we say that our power series is centered at x equals c. And so the power series we were originally looking at, a sub n x to the n, we can recognize is centered at x equals zero. Now for the power series we examined above that was geometric, we found an interval on x for which the series converges. And outside of that interval, the series diverged. In general, if we're looking for the domain of the power series or the x values for which it converges, it's the same set, one of the following must be true. The first case is that the series converges absolutely only at x equals c, only at the center, and it diverges for all other x values. The second case is that the series converges absolutely for all x in the real numbers. And the third case is what we saw above, that there is a positive number r such that for x in the interval c minus r to c plus r, or we can say absolute value of x minus c less than r, the series converges absolutely. And outside of that interval, the series diverges. Notice that here, nothing is being said about the case when x is equal to c minus r, and x is equal to c plus r. Right, we're talking about the open interval here, and then we're talking about open intervals outside of that. But what's happening when absolute value of x minus c is equal to r? This is when l in our ratio test, l is equal to 1, and we have to check these points separately. So for all of our power series, one of these cases is going to be true. And for the one that we examined above, we saw case 3. We saw for absolute value of x strictly less than 1, our series converged and for absolute value of x greater than or equal to 1, it diverged. Now, in this language here, r is the radius of convergence, and the interval c plus r to c minus r is the interval of convergence. So if we have the case that the series converges absolutely only at x equals c and diverges for all other x values, here, our radius of convergence is zero, and our interval of convergence is just the point x equals c, so it's actually not really an interval. In case two, if the series converges absolutely for all x in the real numbers, then our radius of convergence is infinity, and our interval is the entire real line. And of course, in case three, we said that r here is the radius. For our interval of convergence here, we have to look at this set plus what we get from the endpoints. Because it might be that our series is convergent at one of these endpoints or at both of these endpoints. And so in that case, we add that in to the interval here, and that would be the interval of convergence. And you'll see that in the next example. But let's just go back up here to our work for this series. We said that for absolute x less than one, the series converges. This is the interval of convergence. It can also be written as negative 1 to 1, and our radius of convergence in this case would be equal to 1. Our center is x equals 0, and our radius goes one unit from this center in both directions. That's how we get the interval of convergence. Another way you could think of it, if this is a and this is b for your interval of convergence, then the radius is b minus a over 2. So in this case, that would be 1 minus a negative 1, so that would be 1 plus 1 over 2, which would be equal to 1 here. OK, let's go on to take a look at another example. Here we have the series n factorial times x minus 2 to the nth power. We want to find the radius and the interval of convergence. So we set up the ratio test here. 
and we get limit as n goes to infinity absolute value of, we're going to take the n plus first term over the nth term. So we're here. Canceling, we know that n plus 1 factorial has one more factor than n factorial, so all of these factors will cancel here, and we're left with just an n plus 1. And here we have one extra copy of x minus 2. So we're left with a copy of x minus 2. Now as n goes to infinity, we get infinity here. And remember that this is equal to L, which is clearly greater than 1, and so the series diverges for all of these x values. And remember that these x values are all the x values for which x is not equal to 2. Because if x is equal to 2, we couldn't make this division. So let's examine the case when x is equal to 2 and talk a little bit about what happens at the center of a power series. What does our power series look like here for x equals 2? Well, in general, it looks like 0 factorial x minus 2 to the 0, plus 1 factorial x minus 2 to the 1, plus 2 factorial x minus 2 squared, etc. It looks like that. So before we even plug in x equals 2, we see that our first term is 1 times 1. So our first term here is equal to 1. Then by plugging in x equals 2, everywhere else we get a 0 and a 0 and the rest of the terms are going to be 0. So I don't want you to get confused by this 0 to the 0 power, which in general is an indeterminate form. So just keep in mind that we're taking x minus 2 to the 0 power first before we plug in x equals 2. So that'll give us a 1 here. So in any case, at x equals 2, at the center of our power series, the series converges. And that's always going to happen at the center of your power series. The series always is going to converge there. So in this case, our radius of convergence is 0. And our power series only converges when x is equal to 2, right? Because for every other x value, this limit is infinite for the ratio test. So our radius of convergence is 0, and our interval of convergence is x equals 2, which is not really an interval, but that's how we answer the question. We just say x equals 2. Let's take a look at another example. Find the x values for which the series converges. Now keep in mind, this is essentially the same question as asking for the interval of convergence. I'm asking for the x values for which the series converges. Those are the same x values that are in the interval of convergence. So we're going to take our ratio test again, limit as n goes to infinity, absolute value of the n plus first term divided by the nth term. So here I've got the reciprocal multiplying by the reciprocal of the nth term. We do our canceling. We have x minus 1 to the n power and to the n plus first power, so those will go away. We're left with an x minus 1. We have 4 to the n and 4 to the n plus 1, so we're left with a 4 in the denominator. And then we've got an n in the numerator and an n plus 1 in the denominator. Now as n goes to infinity, this limit is equal to 1. So we're just left with absolute value of x minus 1 over 4. And this is our L from the ratio test. So if this is now less than 1, our series converges absolutely. If it's greater than 1, our series diverges. And if it's equal to 1, we have to check those x values separately. So let's examine this interval here for which it converges. Absolute x minus 1 over 4 is less than 1, is the same as absolute x minus 1 over 4 being less than 1. Multiply both sides by 4. Solve for x here. We have x between negative 3 and 5. And so we know so far that for all of these x values, there's absolute convergence. And we know for outside of this interval, for x less than negative 3 and for x greater than 5, we have divergence. What we don't know yet is what happens when x is equal to negative 3 and when x is equal to 5. Those are the endpoints of our interval of convergence and we have to check them separately. So when x is equal to negative 3, our series is x minus 1 to the n 
over n times 4 to the n. So by plugging in x equals negative 3, we get negative 4 to the n over n times 4 to the n. So by doing a little factoring and simplification, we realize that this is negative 1 to the n over n. This is our alternating harmonic series. Now we talked about this in the last lesson, but let's check it again for convergence. We can use the alternating series test here. And so we recognize a sub n to be 1 over n. And we need the limit as n goes to infinity to be 0. We also need a sub n plus 1 to be less or equal to a sub n. And we have that here. That tells us that this series converges. So we can include x equals negative 3 in our interval of convergence. What happens when x is equal to 5? Our x minus 1 to the n becomes 4 to the n. And so simplifying here, we see that we have our harmonic series. And we know that diverges. So x equals 5 is not included in our interval of convergence. So our original series converges for x in the interval closed on negative 3, open on 5. And it diverges otherwise. So let's make sure we answered the question. The question said, for which x values does the series converge? We've answered that. But in case you're asked for the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence, let's answer that as well. The interval of convergence is what we have here, knit from negative 3 to 5, closed on negative 3, open on 5. And our radius of convergence is 4. Again, you could take the difference between these two values and divide by 2 because what we're looking for is the radius around the point x equals 1. And so we're going 4 units from x equals 1 in both directions. So that's the radius of convergence. Let's take a look at this example. Find the x values for which the series converges. We're given 2x to the n over n factorial. So the first thing I want to point out here is that 2x to the n can be written as 2 to the n x to the n. So in fact, this is a power series. And a sub n, our coefficient of x to the n, is 2 to the n over n factorial. We don't have to make this separation, but I just wanted to point out to you that this is how we can recognize this as a power series. Let's take a look at the ratio test here so that we can find the x values for which we have convergence. Limit as n goes to infinity, absolute value, here's the n plus first term multiplied by the reciprocal of the nth term. And we do our canceling, 2x to the n, and then we've got n copies that cancel here. And then here we have n plus 1 factorial and n factorial, so the, all of these factors will cancel with the factorial factors there. And we're left with absolute value of 2x over n plus 1. Now, as n goes to infinity, this value goes to 0 for all x. So remember, this is our L value from the ratio test. And if it's less than 1, we know that we have convergence, absolute convergence. So what we found here is that for all x, we're getting absolute convergence. And so the radius of convergence, we would say, is infinity and the interval of convergence is all of r. Now for this particular series, we're going to see in lesson 34 that this converges to e to the 2x for any x value. Let's take a look at another example. Here we're asked for the interval and radius of convergence. Let's take a look at exactly how this series fits the form for power series. Because remember, we had, in parentheses, just x minus c. We didn't have 3x minus a c. So let's take a look at what we can do with that. Let's first factor that 3 out, and then we have 3 times x plus a third. All of that taken to the nth power. So then we can see that as 3 to the n multiplied by x plus 1 third to the n. So we can see 3 to the n as our coefficient a sub n, and our center is then x equals negative 1 third. And we can continue on with this using the ratio test 
but actually we get more information if we recognize this as a geometric series because with the ratio test we don't get any information on what the series converges to but by viewing this as a geometric series we'll know that when it does converge it converges to a over 1 minus r so here let's look at this as a geometric series where r is equal to 3x plus 1 and a is equal to 1 then we know this is going to converge to a over 1 minus r when absolute value of r is less than 1. So let's take a closer look at that. Simplifying here, we get 1 over 2 minus 3x. And this interval simplifies to negative 2 thirds less than x less than 0. And we know that this diverges as a geometric series for absolute r greater than or equal to 1. So that means outside of this interval, including when it's equal to 1 here. So x less or equal to negative 2 thirds, we get divergence. x greater than or equal to 0, we get divergence. So our interval of convergence is negative 2 thirds to 0. It's that open interval. And our radius of convergence is 1 third. Again, it's half the difference here. And another way we could view that is that we set our center for this series is negative one-third. And so from negative one-third, we're moving one-third a unit in both directions. And that gives us the interval of convergence. So our radius of convergence is one-third. Let's take a look at one more example. Here we have negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n over 2n factorial. We want to find the x values for which the series converges. Now notice we only have even powers in this power series. And that's okay. That just means that all of the coefficients with odd index are equal to 0. So let's take a look at the ratio test for this one. We have to be careful here. Now that we have a 2n and a 2n, we have to be careful with our n plus first term. We have to replace the n here with an n plus 1. So that means 2n becomes 2 times n plus 1, or really 2n plus 2. Same thing's happening here inside this factorial on the bottom. 2 times n plus 1 is 2n plus 2 factorial. This is our n plus first term, and we're multiplying by the reciprocal then of the nth term. So now what happens here when we cancel? We've got x to the 2n and then x to the 2n plus 2. So all of these cancel and we're left with two factors up on top. So we have an x squared here. Now we're in absolute value, so we don't care about the negative 1 to the n plus 1 and negative 1 to the n. So we could just cancel them both. We don't care about that negative sign. It's not going to have any effect on our solution. And now what's happening here with these factorials? This is 2n plus 2 factorial. So we're going to have 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1, then 2n and the rest. So 2n factorial cancels here, and we're left with a 2n plus 2 and a 2n plus 1 in the denominator. And so we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity here. And so that's going to be equal to 0 for all x values. Again, this is our limit L from the ratio test, which is less than 1 for all x values. That tells us this series converges absolutely for all x. And we're going to see in lesson 34 for this series that it converges to cosine x for all x. And with that, we'll conclude our lesson on power series.